Okay, so here's our section on uh, the uh, uh, number conversions. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and write in red because that's gonna be very clear color. All right, so let's go and do this. All right, in case you haven't learned conversions by this point, hoping you have, but here it is. All right, the first one that the uh, exam asks you to do is binary to hexadecimal. So remember, binary is base two, hexadecimal is base 16. So you go from there to there. Now, what it means is that binary is base two is that, um, and actually it'd be easier if I just erased that. Oh, shoot. That means we should probably go ahead and get the decimal value of the binary number first. So I'm going to draw out all eight. We usually only do eight places here. And that's because that's also mostly what you need to know for, for uh, future careers in computer science. All right. Hopefully you have it. That binary works. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. Hope you can guess. The next one, 32, 64, 128. And just watch closely as I put these numbers onto there. So it starts off, uh, I'm going to change the color to, uh, no, cyan's not going to be visible enough, so blue. All right, so we put it in, 1, 2, or 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now let's go ahead and add those up. So that means this first number is equal to 32 plus 16. Oh, not, not plus 16, sorry, because that's a zero. So 16 and eight, we don't add in. But four, two, and one, we do. So I'm gonna put that in there, four, two, and one. Add them up. That makes nine and three. So we know it's equal to 39, but that's in base 10. And we're not looking for base 10, we're looking for base 16. So now let's go from base 10 to base 16. Uh, now, for that, ignore the little pop-ups that keep coming up. They, they, they don't, they're not real. They don't exist. That's not happening. So uh, 39, let's go ahead and turn that into uh, a hexadecimal number. I put that 10 there because right now it's in decimal. So let's move into hex. Now, uh, the hexadecimal place values are to be written down here, 1, 16, and 256. Fans of the game 2048 might be very familiar with those numbers. All right, now, first question we have to ask ourselves, which of these numbers, what's the biggest number here that fits into this one? Well, that obviously be 16. And how many times? Twice. So that means we have so far, because 2 times 16 makes 32. We have so far 32 of it taken care of, leaving us with 7 left over. Well, then let's ask ourselves the next question. Okay, does this number fit into that number evenly? Yes, it does. How many times? 7. And that is going to be, I'll put the answer in aquamarine. That'll be nice. Right there. That is the answer to the first question. I'll do one more of these and then kind of leave you to do the rest. So I'll just erase all the stuff in blue since that's all the, uh, that's all of our work. Yeah, we just won't do that. Octal problem, I guess. I just erased it. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do the uh, the longer one right here. So let's go ahead and, and get back to our, our brush. Get us out of aquamarine. Get back to blue. Okay, so now we're doing this problem. So let's put in our zero. Our one. I'm going to go a little faster on this one. So I think you can read. All right, add them up. 
So, so far we have 128. We have a 64. We do not have a 32. We do have a 16. We do have an 8. And a 4. And a 2. And we don't have a 1, so I won't add it in there. Add them all up. We get 8, 12, uh, 18, 26, 30, 32. That come and this one now, three, five, uh, eleven, twelve. All right. So our decimal number is two hundred and twenty-two. Now we have to ask ourselves, what's the biggest number here that fits into that one? Well, that actually be sixteen. How many times? Ah, uh, here. Let me show you something that'll help you on the test. Since I only use calculators, go ahead and just write down the power the the multiples of 16 below. And then when you get to the one that you can use, well, there you go. I think I'm getting confused actually. Hang on. Yeah. 34, 44. Okay. Yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, 160. All right. Okay, there we go. So we've gotten a bunch of numbers here. All right, and I, I got them all down here. All right. So we know that's um, 116, 2 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that means 13 goes right in there. And how many numbers do we have to left over if we pick that one? Well, 2, 2, 2, minus 2, oh, 8. And that leaves us with 14. So your answer is 13, 14, but not really. Hang on there. We need to now get these to be single digit numbers. 13, for instance. Well, 13 is actually represented. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. 13 is actually represented by a C and 14 by a D. I had that wrong. Wait. 13 is represented by a D, 14 by an E. Why is that? Well, here, take it like this. A is going to be considered 10, B is 11, and so on and so forth. C is 12, D is 14, E is, uh, D is 13, E is 14, our final answer comes out to D. Oh, wait, I should write this in off of my ring. Did I get it? Four. D, E. All right. Now that's the first one. That's just going from binary to hexadecimal. As for the rest, we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and erase that whole page. Now, uh, let's go from octal to decimal. So octal is a system where you have 1, and then 8, and then 64. 
so I'm going to go a little quicker on this one. Our number is 27. That we have to convert from octal to decimal. So let's go and get that decimal value. Multiply them together. 2 times 8 equals 16, plus 7 times 1, which makes 7, makes 23. So that means our decimal value is 23. And then we also, also need to get it to binary. Well, if you remember the binary chart, If you remember what the values of binary are, 23, yeah, well, what's the biggest number here that fits into 23? D16 goes in once. We are left with 7 left over. So 8 does not fit into 7, because if we go and do that, 23 minus 16, that equals 7. So 8 does not fit into it, so it's a 0. 4 does fit into 7, so that's going to be a 1. 2 fits into 3, so that's the next one. And 1 fits in at the end. So again, I took that decimal number, and then I figured out how much I need to add up to get to it. That happens whenever we go from decimal to another number, okay? Keep that in mind. Our binary number then is 10111. So yeah, this second uh, part asks you for two numbers. All right, now, hopefully you have that. We're gonna do one last one. This one's going to be the hex to decimal. And we'll do this one since it's going to be a little harder. No, actually, we'll do uh, this one. That's better. Okay, so we're dealing with hexadecimal numbers, which are 1, 16, 256. And we don't really need to worry about the rest of the numbers after that because I'm not giving you anything bigger than that. So because we're going from decimal I'm sorry, hexadecimal to decimal, we have to go and put the numbers in like the snow. See it? Okay. 3 times 16 makes 48. F, we said, is equal to 15. So 15 times 1 makes 15. So that's 48 plus 15 which if we do the math on that is 63. So we end up with a decimal answer of 63. And then going from decimal to binary, once again, since we're going from decimal to another uh, system, we have to get our numbers out here for binary. And then I'll go ahead and put in the numbers now. All right, our number is 63. So it's the biggest number here that fits into 63. That's right, it's 32. So we take that away. And that's going to leave us with 31. 16 fits into 31. So we'll go and do that. And that'll leave us with 15. 15 minus 8. Leaves us with 7. 7 minus 4 equals 3. 3 minus 2 equals 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And notice, the binary number we're left with is just simply numbers that add up to make that old number. So if I were to pull out a calculator, and just put in each of those numbers, 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, I get 63. Okay? So again, that's if I add up those numbers, look at that. That's our answer.